Okay, I think I'm getting started. So good morning again to everybody that um, turned up and joined in. Good morning in Australia, depending where you are, of course. Um, today, I'd like to show you a little bit about the external lighting and we also look at some internal lighting. So um, it, it's always a bit of a question. I get this a lot, just, just very quickly. It depends on the project you have. The lighting will always be a little bit different. So if you got a project and you figure out the lighting looks pretty good, there could be a different project you they are oh, use the same lighting, but you can obviously give that a go and it probably looks okay, but but you have to fine tune it. So that's just a little tidbit. Um, you know, don't expect that everything always works for the same project because you know you can have a different environment, you can have this is example, it's an aged care facility and it's only one level, but you maybe have a unit block which is five, six or higher, and as soon as the model is higher up you know again that the lights just need adjustment so keep that in mind all right i've got this here now the hk facility i only just started working on this actually you can see um i added just a bit of environment some, some you know a couple of trees plants cars a couple of textures so i haven't done anything with the light really so that's a great example to show off before I commence with this at the moment i did while i've been doing all this adding the trees and, and and you know other assets i've been working in preference in quality i've been working in medium it's just faster to move around so i'm adding all this stuff now if i want to go into doing the light you you have to remember you have to uh, put this higher up i'll show you what i mean so if i go okay now let me zoom in a little bit uh make that a bit bigger so let me go down here. So it looks all right, but as example, if I go down to my renderer, and at the moment I'm in standards, that's the old twin motion real-time rendering engine. And I do like to use Lumen, and you see Lumen here is grayed out. I can't use it. And the computer specs are powerful enough to use. So what happened is you gotta go to the preferences and make sure you up the quality, okay? Now you can play a little bit with it, you can go straight away into high, then obviously it will work, but you can also say, oh, let me just increase uh, the shadow and the effects to high, and you click OK. And there you go, the lumen button is available now. So the range engine is you know, set up to a high quality. So let me click on lumen now and see what happens. So if I click on this now, there you go. So you probably notice if I go back, have a look at the shadow especially the shadows, if I click on Lumen, they get quite dark, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, so that's the, that's the main thing when you start up, um, don't forget to be on higher quality, so, so it's actually showing up um, when you work with your lighting system. Okay, let's, let's go back to our environment, and I maybe get rid of the scene. So at the moment I'm in global lighting just using the sun so if i move around it just uses you know uses the sun so i'm not using hdri i show you that after which we have the option here the hdri environment we can use that too to lighten up the scene but i want to start first with the simple daylight system i call it okay so i'm sure you have done this before before you obviously can you know set day of time and it will adjust the the scene a bit so let me go a little bit lower so it gets a bit too dark okay let me just stay here so if i go over here a couple of things i can see the shadows uh too dark the scene itself is a bit too dark so you can see the lower the song gets the less light the scene has so obviously you got to go to the next tab here which is the exposure you notice i have auto exposure off because i i just yeah it's if you start with emotion it's good to have it all maybe for a week or two but you will see yourself soon it's it's yeah it's just not good enough as i it doesn't look that nice but look it's good to start with so it you know helps you moving around and the light looks fairly okay so i got that off and the exposure at the moment i got on six so you can obviously now start increasing the exposure so if i increase the exposure let me go as far so the shadow looks much lighter but you can see that it almost starts to 
burn out a little bit. It's not too bad. Let me have a quick look, go a little bit uh, closer. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. So that's 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 okay. So just be careful if you go a little bit more bright and you want the sh you know shadows even better. The scene is burning out so that's one thing you can't do and white anything white will burn out first so if you go here you see the white lines i've got for the parking let me increase this so you can clearly see the white lines they're really starting to burn out so anything white in your scene is the first problem in regards to you know burning out so keep that in mind too well, let me go down again adjust that roughly so that's that's the first thing to look at the shadows you know be make sure the shadows don't look too dark we got an option here if i go to details we got all those little options here so the other option was down here like local exposure so that's something new into emotion now let me turn that off what it does is it can um boost the shadows by a certain amount and the highlights it can reduce them which is really helpful let me show you the, uh, quick so if i enable this that's just set uh, i think 0.5 is the default setting so if i do the shadow boost on zero and let me just go down a little bit so see the shadows here where the cars are pretty dark so if i boost the shadow now concentrate around here i boost this up now see this is much nicer now so that's a nice little new feature that I have to adjust the shadow without changing any of your exposure the same thing is with the highlight reduction so let me just you know go on purpose a little bit high you know it's a bit burned out but so if I go towards one you can see it takes the highlight out not enough but let me go a little bit down so it's a little bit bright now so if I go up to you know all the way to one it does take that out so those two um sliders they're really really nice actually I, i've used them every time now so so make sure you you do use them okay let me go there then the other options we have you uh what, what is quite important is the sun setting so the intensity let me just put this on zero for now that's that's by the way what I love for Twin Motion. You know, if you if, if we render with with other render engines that are not real time, here I can see straight away what's happening. So let me put in just five and I hit enter, and it's just in real time without having to wait for the new render. It just shows you, and I love this really. So again, you then go up first. You you can see and I, I used the slider before, but I stopped using this straight away because I don't know why the slider is really sensitive. I hardly moved it, so you got to use numbers. So I had it on 25, let me go back. So what I can recommend is you use, you divide it by two or you double it. As example, from 25, let me go to 12. Let me go back to 25, hit enter, and I double 20, uh, 25 to 50 now. Okay, so that's sort of, I just, keep working like this for the last couple of years and I find this quite good instead of going from 50 to 45 because I see a lot better what's happening with a bigger step so that that's a nice little tidbit I think so I had it on 25 and it actually doesn't look too bad so let me just leave this for now then the next setting is the sun size the sun size in the lumen settings don't think it matters let me have a quick look i'm sure that doesn't matter yeah see it doesn't do anything what it does is i'll show you in a minute when you use path tracer it will change the blurriness of the shadow but only if you use path tracers let me go back it was on point point five two okay so if i add past path tracer now which is uh, there so you click path tracer on and I've got it on low setting at the moment. Let me go back to the environment. So you see the shadow, it's pretty sharp here and it's blurring a little bit here. So what I need to do is maybe next, we go back to preferences, quality, and let me go to ultra for the shadow just to make sure I get the full quality. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same, so that's okay. What it does is the closer and um, something is to the ground it's just 
the way it is if you walk outside next time have a look anything close to the ground it's quite sharp and then the further away it starts to blur out you probably know but just in case you don't know that that's what happened so if i change the sun size now let me change it to one it starts to blur out more let me have a look maybe i should zoom in a bit oops All right, I gotta move a bit slower. All right, let's look at this blur here. You can see it's sharp, sharp where the, where the tire is, and then it starts to blur out. So if I put this now, the sun size um, to zero, everything is sharp, really sharp. And that's not natural. Okay, so that, that doesn't look realistic. So. That's why we important this setting to get a realistic render if you use path tracer. So let me put the sun size for now on one. And yeah. Again, this is this is something you just have to look, at. maybe even depending on how, how low the sun is or how high the sun is, you might again have to adjust that just a little bit. Okay, stop me using I stop using path tracer now. I'm going back to uh, next one, sun reflection. This has really to do, pretty much as I said, with reflection of the sun. So it, it shows up a lot if the uh, floor is reflected. It's just out of, you know, because I'm doing a, a bit of a webinar here. Let me just make this reflective. It looks almost wet. Nice. So we go to, oops, that's my ambience. There we go. Now, some reflections, so I've got 0.92, so if I lower this, oh, it doesn't even show on the ground, but you can see the car. Let, let me look, let me zoom to the car. Probably depends on the sun angle too, so. Yeah, actually even the gutter on the roof on the side, you can see the reflection of the sun. This is no reflection and high reflection. So having some reflection is definitely a good thing because again, in real time, there will be some reflection, but make sure it's not too high. So again, that's a slider you just have to try out. And I have a field by now, but sometimes what I can recommend is, depending on the project you have, the few you have, go on Google and have a look at something similar out there. But the real photo, you know, just compare. You learn a lot by just a real photo, maybe a similar some settings in height or the sun is a bit lower and then you compare it to the scene you've got right in front of you and then you can move those sliders around. Great moon and stars we don't need at the moment. Ambient has to do with the light and that again will increase the shadow. So right here ambient if, if I go this, this down you can see obviously it's really bad and then higher up you go the brighter it gets. I'll leave this on one for now. Make sure you don't go too high because then the shadows, they just don't look nice enough. Um, see if I go really high here, at two, I feel I feel down here, you see the facade? I mean, there's shadow, but the shadow is, I don't know, I find it's too too bright. Um, so, so be careful with this slider, but it is very helpful for the overall scene. It's very similar to one I showed you down here with the local exposure. Now white balance is also quite important. So let me go with the sun, let me go even further down. Okay, so it's quite a low sun now. So what you can do with the white balance, obviously you can see I would have to increase the exposure a little bit. See, there you go. The white balance, it depends. Sometimes I think it's depending what uh, what um, season you got. You know, if you got a winter or summer, that that's quite important. So at the moment, it's more summery. Uh, you can almost say seven three is not bad. I some a lot of times I have six five hundred. So what it does is you see it it took out a bit of um, the how you say the, the reddish. You know, the sun when the sun goes down and gets a bit sort of reddish. It takes that out. So in winter, as example, if I put this on 4,000, winter is really cold. 
So you see, I did it over, I overdone it obviously, but you can see it's getting, it makes the image cold. So you can see the flowers on the left, they don't fit at all. You wouldn't have flowers like this in winter. They wouldn't be as green, there probably will be no flowers. So just be careful with that. But this white balance is a very important settings to, for realism. Let me go the other way around. Let me go to 11,000 as example. You see it gets, it's almost, yeah, too reddish, orangey. So you gotta be careful, but, but this, this again, this setting, depending on the project, depend on the sun height, you need to adjust it a little bit. It does it automatically, obviously, if I go back to six and a half, and let me zoom out a little bit. So if I go here, you know, from here and I go down, it, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do it a lot, to be honest. You know, it doesn't get like, it's very low sun now. Let me go, and you can see, yeah, there, so it's pretty low, but it doesn't really get the orange tint. So you still think if it's that low, you know, add some, maybe make it 8,000. So there you go, so it adds that orangey tint because it's quite low. So if I go back up to almost in the middle of the day, just put this back to six and a half, five and a half, something like this, that, that's a good setting. Again, you see straight away, depending how where the sun is, exposure has to come down, okay? That's what I meant with, with the settings. There's no all for one. Unfortunately, a lot of people would love that, but, but that's just not the case. Great. So that's, I hope that that's pretty good. Uh, and you understood what we do with the sort of daytime setting, global lighting up here, and also with the exposure and local exposure. Now we could add obviously a bit of weather, which, which does affect the scene again so let me just go and make it a bit you know very cloudy as soon as it starts raining obviously you know you lose light but let me try to not rain um, yeah what you can do is you can also go that way and you can edit preferences effects you can turn them to low but you know no that's not a good idea that's just display don't, don't worry about it. that was a bad idea um okay let me just go yeah okay so it is look i don't think it's raining this little bit of this thing you see i think it has to with lumen just trying to recalculate Okay, from now, from this, and I go all the way to the left, it doesn't do much to the light unless it starts almost raining. So, so you can use it a little bit, but what happens is the clouds obviously appear on the horizon. There you go, so that's useful. Me, personally, I don't like the clouds coming up. They just don't look realistic enough, and you'll see in a moment when I show you about the HDRI. Let me use that. Anyway, so that's something um, going further down, the location, obviously, I don't have to get into that. That's just a north offset, which, you know, will move the shadow around depending where your location is. Okay, so let's go to the HDRI. Any questions, by the way? Sorry, before I go there, let me know if you got any questions. Just in the, you know, write a quick message. No, I think everything is okay. Great. In this case, I keep going and I turn on the HDR environment. So the HDRI is a high dynamic range image. So that image has, um, has the information of the light of the actual sun and environment is in that image. And that image can be used in Twin Motion to, to lighten up your scene. So, so you, as soon as I enable this, it will turn off the other system. So up here, if I enabled now the HDRI environment, let's just click a tick there, and I go up, see I can't use that anymore, the slider. Okay, so that's gone. What you can see is at the moment, there are some clouds in there, and that's just 
the HDRI image itself. At the moment, I have none clear. That's just from the standard library. I put that in. All right, a couple of things now. I added this little tick, and as you can see, it looks pretty bad at the moment. Okay, so that means again you have to adjust the settings a little bit. Before I start down here, let me just go up and, as example, we lower that a little bit. Those ones here, they still work. So sun intensity, let me go up, uh, down to 100. You see that still works. Even so the daylight system right up here, that's, you know, that's uh, off now, but the rest is still, you can still use, which is great. Um, you can see you could use a bit more ambient light maybe, but that doesn't really work well here, but you could go down to local exposure. Let me have a look, shadow boost, yeah. It does work, you see, there you go. But, you know, we need to go down and work with the HDR environment image a little bit. So the intensity at the moment is on one. Again, let me just double this. Anything happened, do five. So what happened is the sky gets brighter, obviously, but also the scene. Let me do a really bright, let me do 50. So the scene is totally, you know, burned out. So again, just play around with this till you're sort of happy what you see here. You can, if you like, down here, at the moment, that's the default. As soon as you turn on HDRI the first time, everything is ticked on. So we do have the HDR effects lighting. So let me turn that off. So you can see the sky stays the same, but if you look at the scene itself, it's different okay so it suddenly if i move up yeah it doesn't turn it on yet it has to turn oh yeah obviously it uses all those and um, it uses the sun intensity still as before but it doesn't use the hdri image so if i turn the other one off it just locks on to hdri turn it off so now you go up and this is back on See, I can use this again. So now I use the time of the day and I use the HDRI by, I, you know, click that again. So it uh, affects the lighting, but I don't use the sun from the HDRI. The sun is locked in in that little image there. You can't really move that apart from rotation, obviously. Let me put that back in. And rotate so I rotate the image you can see the clouds going so the whole image the HDRI I do rotate that and you can see it rotates uh, well it's the Sun but because you got the information inside that image it is almost like the daylight system okay now one thing you have to be careful if you mix them together if I turn this let me maybe go uh, like this look at the shadow of the tree so i turn this off now and you see the shadow is different so that means you would you would have to make sure the time of the day if you can make it similar you know so you'd have to go there i cheat a little bit now with my um location let me have a look there you go so the shadow now is there and if i go and yeah so there's a it's a little bit off, but I recommend that, you know, that at least make it similar to the HDRI shadow. It has to do with all the rest of it, because you can always rotate the HDRI and then rotate the sun again. Look, that's just a tip. I feel like it works well for me, but maybe some people don't use that, but that's just the way I work. I like to show you also the effect of a better image in the back, because that's why I don't use the, the clouds in the um, in the daylight system. So let me go, you can actually go from here, see the three little dots come up, you go to library, and then let me go to skies, and you have all those different options. Um, let me go to a morning, afternoon, cloudy, I did download something, you know how to download them, there's an arrow, you just click on it and it will download, you have to be logged into the Epic Games um, account, 
but let me go down here just take something different so let me artist you click and you move over here and you just let go okay so you can see the difference straight away it's it's quite a big difference let me move around okay you can see already that those clouds look way more realistic than the clouds in the daylight system so that's why i mainly use hdra images for for my renders but like like i said even if you want to use still a bit of the daylight system yes just you know get rid of lock the sun but yeah that's just you can see also that it looks quite good the lighting up of the scene itself you see even the it sort of gives you already a little bit of the orange tint I, I told you before because the sun is fairly light in here let me move around if i can even see it yeah yeah it's somewhere here behind the cloud so it's it's i think it's around here it's a pretty low um so that's the the beauty of the hdri images because it has all the information of the environment not just the actual sun itself so it, it, it's just better a lot of professionals use only hdri images and no daylight system to lighten up their scene i find it a little bit different when you a li little bit more easy when you start off using the daylight system so if you're new to it i recommend maybe do this first to get used to trim motion but then if you think well i'm i'm good enough at this now i, I give hdri a go play around with this this is again the beauty you, i can just chuck in another one here you know let me chuck in a really low one and uh, low sun overcast uh, this one as example you see again the whole the whole scene already adjusts automatically without much i didn't do much at all but it it looks already different you know and, and, and that's nice, I, I like that. See, low sum. And then always you start playing with it, you know, with intensity. Let me go up to 20. Or oh, you want a darkish, you know, and it's just almost starting to rain or something. See? So that's that's cool, I, I really like that. So, um, yes, look, there's, there's, there's more to it, but I think this little overview of the external um lighting setup will give you plenty to work on um, and test it you know you, you use the t use use the real time engine test it you know move move like i said use those five go to ten go to two and a half you know just like that just quickly you know just put them in hit enter put a new number in hit enter and just look at the visuals look look at how it looks because a lot of times it also has to do with your feeling with you know again compared to a real image google a real image that looks similar then you look between those images you know to to get it sort of similar and the more you do it the more experience you get or next time you walk outside and you have a walk look around look at the shadows uh, i always say that because that's quite important just look at the shadows in the morning afternoon during the daytime it's always different okay look um, i give you one minute 30 seconds before i go to the internal if you have any questions let me know now please okay mm. no i think everybody's quiet this is great okay let me go inside so i set a little few here this one beautiful see even even when i start up my my stuff looks like this okay first things first because i just click on the media here there's obviously a set you know all the settings are saved so let me go over here let me look at the renderer first yeah i thought so it's on standard did that on purpose so it's all good i usually use lumen anyway but just to show you so that's the standard one before I keep going, it should be right because I changed my preferences, but let's have a quick look. Yeah, I still got ultra there, high there. That's fine for now, so, okay. 
Let's click on Lumen and see what happens. All right, that's a very big difference here. It's uh, very dark because this Lumen is a lot more accurate. It gets rid of any light that sort of can't get through from the roof, as example. And you obviously have some light bouncing around, but it's not enough. Okay, so what, what are we doing to, to get this, this a bit better? First thing is you can play a little bit with the sun. Let me go to the environment here and have a look if you can, depending on your project. I chose it a bit on purpose. There's not too much light coming in because I only got this one window on the left here, really. You can see if I move and get some light in, it does get light. As example, the ceiling, you see already lights up. Now I do have a feeling I need a higher quality. See, if you go inside, the quality of display is even more important. Let me go quality and set everything in ultra. Yeah, it's not too bad, but it, it definitely looks looks a bit better. Okay, you see what I told before, this is totally burned out. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do. You have to lower the exposure. And just look at the wall here, white wall, this one, those two, maybe even, yeah, the walls are more whitish or, you know, bright. So definitely look at that. So just move the slider down till they're not burned out. There you go. And now it's very dark in here. Don't worry, that's fine. This is if you want the sun coming in a little bit. Let's just say you don't want the sun coming in. You go like this. You want the sun a little bit come. There's a skylight up here. Then you can say, okay, cool. I can, I can increase the exposure again. Look at this. Because it's, this is not burning out. There's no sunlight coming direct onto this facade. So in this case, I can say, oh, great. I can in increase my exposure before atom you know, artificial lights in here. So let me go up. But then again, you see over here, it's it's getting close to burn out. Let me go a bit further. You see, oh, this is great here, not too bad, but but this is this almost white. So that's not a good thing. So just go there back a bit like this. And from now on, I would add some artificial lights. Okay, let's start off with this. I have the scene and light indoors. Now, before adding the lights, remember you have to add set active container. So anything I add will go straight into this nice little light indoor container. You go to the library and the first light I usually add is an area light. So you just click and move and add this in here. Great, now what we can do is, we can go to media, uh, redraw, and you can have the media preview. And we unlock this, and then we can make this a little bit bigger. Now, I just want to show you this quickly. I use that sometimes when I move around. It's a bit hard because I only have one screen to show you, but let's just say I move in because I've got at the moment this light, which I need to place in front of this window. So that means with my preview I've got here, which stays the same, I can watch this in my second window. I'll turn this off for now, but keep that in mind, it is quite handy because yeah, you can. it's just nicer to work. Because uh, in the moment you'll see I increase the depth of the light and then I can see it from my camera view I like to have possibly. Uh, I get rid of this for now. Right, so move this over here. The first thing is you do, you then turn this around by 90. Okay, and we move this roughly here. Now, some people ask me, how can I move it outside just like there? You could, but I don't recommend it because I do have to turn the shadows on for that. So area light, let me go down here. Oops, there we go. Shadows, and I need to enable the shadows because otherwise it just doesn't look as nice. If I enable the shadows, you can see that's not gonna work. It looks pretty bad. So th this light has to be inside the frame of the window. So just move it slowly. The next bit is, I like you I like to make sure that this is, 
the, this is the gizmo is in the middle of the light so move that gizmo in the middle of the top of the window and bottom of the window because now we can change the width and the length so let me do change this so i can go wider also obviously move that in the middle so i move it in the middle of this frame here okay yeah that's that's there so it's actually let me have a look oh interesting that's not the middle all right fair enough all right so what you have to do is make sure you come a little bit away from the sides of the window just a little bit and the same with the top and bottom so let me there you go so you can see the frame now of the area light maybe a little bit higher so 1.8 maybe yeah okay that's not bad so if i go back now let me go here so that's the view i had before now i place this window and now the next thing is we can do we can work with this in regards to as example the attenuation is just five meters at the moment so if i increase this the light goes further let me go about there now the next piece make sure see it starts to burn out there to see the wall it's probably okay but just in case then you have to lower the intensity let me go to 200 yeah I think it's better this wall is better now two things at the moment I'm in lumen uh, ambience render so I'm in uh, real-time lumen so if I use the path right so just quick let me turn that on there you go it's actually not bad sometimes it can happen you use real time and pathways and the light is quite different let me go back again to real time path racer it's not bad quite happy that's good i can't show you what happened but sometimes it's darker or lighter depending what you use if you use path racer or real time you will have to adjust then this light um, again i still with real time for now so i've got one light here it's going there and you can see the shadow at the moment let me have a quick look they look like floating but it's probably the shadow yeah no that's cool so that's the shadow because you can see it's floating there so let me go to the area light and we go down here shadow enable that's good miscellaneous you do have a couple of things here the edge angle so if i move the edge angle you can really just see that the you know where it is actually here so that, that affects the angle like this and the other one here this is the shadow gotta find this again see even i look sometimes for settings let me have a quick look if i render this up in path tracer yeah it's low quality but you can see the the path tracer does the shadow correct there but that's um not what I want. Let me go back to ambience. <sighs> Gotta find this now. Very nice. No, it's not in there. FX. Uh, nope. Must be in here. Uh, no quick expansion. Hang on a second. Hmm. That's annoying. Where is that thing going? It's the shadow bias. You know what? I'll get back to you with that one. Uh, I know if you render a higher quality, this will be fine, but it would be nice to see it in, um, you know, in view because it looks a bit silly at the moment that they're floating. I'm sure they don't. No, they don't. See, it shouldn't show up like that. Okay, I better keep going with lighting up the scene a little bit more. Now you can see obviously it's really dark at the back there. If I move in here, there is some you know windows back here, but there's nothing really there. So you would have to add some more lights. As example, I've got here a light at the ceiling. Let me actually turn this down a little bit. Mm, One hundred. Okay, cool. Now I've got this light here, which is a ceiling light. 
and let me have the spotlight there so that's what it is at the moment by the way it the, the color of the light itself you can see I put neon on that let me quickly click on that oops there you go so the color that's the white um, actually didn't put neon a put emissive yeah five let me do just zero so it's just sort of a whitish color but because it's inside it doesn't look up at anything white so I just increased the emissive here five you can play with it you know I can put 50 in but it probably wouldn't look uh, it looks actually not too bad anyway again that's a bit of trial and error all right I have this now and I right click set active container now I put the spotlight in let me go a bit closer spotlight and I just place it there it never goes exactly you know to the object but it's close so now you move around and you have to obviously go up and place that sort of in the middle just use on your keyboard hit two three one two three four you know depending how fast it is so I hit two at the moment to slow that a little bit down and just place it roughly in the middle you know that's not too bad and also in the height height wise hit three again so height wise right, let me let me go too high so what happens now is okay so that's the spotlight obviously so spotlight shadows and you have to turn the shadow on and it disappeared because it's too high it's inside the light so you have to move that down now till the spotlight shows up oh, yeah, there again so this is now just outside okay so be aware of that and you can obviously um, change the reflection of the spotlight that you see on the floor it reflects more or less and you also have the cone angle like this which obviously is not the way it should be much wider so just play again see it's real time i love it you just play with this attenuation is again it's 10 meters at the moment if you want to do it less you know there you go oops see it's very fiddly again maybe move um, over here and just put five in right so let me turn off the area light totally and the spotlight it's actually not too bad so what I do is now we go to the ceiling light so that's the whole light now selected and because I, uh, it is on the the spotlight is within the folder of the ceiling light if I copy this now it will copy along so let me go to the green one I hold down shift and we just copy them along a little bit I just make this up roughly now let go if you want an exact number you can say oh, I want them every two and a half meters so 2.5 and there's the two things now instant or copy in this case you definitely need an instant that means you can adjust the light at once so i show you what i mean so let me go up maybe make them five hit okay great just stay here like that for now so because they're now instant you can go on any of those lights it doesn't really matter which one let me take this one and if I now change the intensity they all change see make sure you can see when I move this because it's the real time loom and I need to recalculate so it takes a bit let me go quickly there and just wait or you turn it down and you just wait a little bit and you can see it adjusts so that's when you do um, a copy and you do um, it, you do copy that it actually can instant sorry got that word again instant do, do an instant copy okay because what happened if you as example let me take this one here let me take you one another spotlight here or two let me just take this but I take only the spotlight now so I'm right there and I copy this over and I want to copy because this time I want to adjust the cone angle, make it wider, intensity, 
a little bit off. I just do this as an example. I wouldn't do that, but you can see whatever I'm doing here does not affect those lights here, okay? Because it's a copy and it's, it's uh, not an instant. Keep that in mind. I delete it again. I don't need this there. Good tips on HDRI. Thanks. That's good, right? Um, I'm happy you enjoyed that. Just saw that message. Okay, so you can see setting up an internal um, view, it depends a lot on the artificial lights inside if you don't have a lot of large windows. Okay, this is a perfect example because it's much harder to get this light right than if I got a living room and I got this big wind, let's just say, you know, this would be just in a normal development. You would be right here. You know, you have this nice view and you're in a living room and you got those windows coming in because even I move the, the sun again, coming in a little bit, you, you might still need an area light a little bit, but you need a lot less artificial lights. Okay. So I think this, this example here is quite good because it's not that easy. It, it needs a bit of work. Um, but I think you get in there now. If you do it this way, you will have no problems. Again, further down the back, what I would do is in this case, let me go a little bit further in there. Obviously, there could be some down lights, you know, then you have obviously lights for the down lights. But you could also add just an omnidirectional light. Let me go up, make sure I'm still in lights indoors, set active. So move an omnidirectional light just in here. Again, I just do this now on the run as an example. Let me go there, a little bit in the middle. And then you go back to your view. So that's right there at the moment. Let me play with this. Do you know what? Let's, let's move this further back. Right there. All right, cool. Okay, so it's still selected, which is this omnidirectional light. You can see now if I increase the intensity, obviously the ceiling burns out, but I can increase, make it a bit lower like this and then increase the attenuation. So if I increase that, see it reaches quite far. Can you see that? So I could add this and just take this now. Let me go there. Okay, so, you know, move another one back there. Uh, let's make it an instant, that's fine. I'll go to my view. Okay, you can see already with only two lights, omnidirectional, let me turn them off. See how dark it is at the back there. There, by the way, is a kitchen in here. You would need the light in the kitchen. So by just adding a couple of lights, obviously play a bit better and you know, it looks a bit funny because there is no down light, but you know what I mean, you know, add a couple of lights. If you don't want the omnidirectional light, add another area light right at the back here you know, coming maybe from back here towards this. Let's just do that quickly. And area light, put this in. You can see it doesn't take long. If, you use, if you're a little bit used to trim motion, how to move around, it really doesn't take that long. And there you go. Move in a bit. Turn it a bit. And yeah, that'll do for now. The width let me do this um, three okay cool let's go back so now you have this turn the omnidirection light off but we have this area light again attenuation just move this oh wrong one wrong one sorry area light oh this one there you go i thought it wouldn't work you can see how the area light extends all the way Again, yes, it's burned out a bit, but you could cheat and say, of course you can't really see the floor back there. I could go down, you know, like this. The floor probably is burned out if you would stand behind there, but you can't see it, can you? Okay, great. If I swap from here now to, um, I've got Lumen. Let me swap to the path trace and see what happens. There you go. So it's good, I'm quite happy with this, that it's actually very similar. That's a good one. You can, by the way, see this, I just noticed that is actually too dark. Have a look, if I turn the path tracer on, 
Yeah, see, this is way darker back here. So there you go. So there is a difference. So be aware of that. Maybe you ask, oops, then. Don't you need some sort of a light fixture as a source of your area on your illumination? You don't. It's a visual thing, um, Steve. You, you know, it's just what I put in here. You got to make sure it doesn't look weird. I, I don't understand what you mean. Yes, there should be a fixture and like a set fixture. This is, this is the dining room of the HK facility. And yes, there would have definitely some down lights. But I just thought I'd show you what you can do with the lights. So if, as example, look what happened at the moment. I turn this down. And turn that off. So if I turn off the two omnidirectional light, and I only got this area light here as example, obviously it shows up here, but I could move this area light even further back. And then it sort of lights up the room and you know without anything noticeable looking strange but i agree with you if i got this people think yeah that doesn't look realistic because the way this is there should be a light right there like this a light feature so yeah good question you, you need light features definitely that's purely me moving around and explaining a bit uh, how to light up different areas because yes i would definitely have some down lights first fixtures and then place my lights just like, like I did with the spotlights here, I place them obviously within the fixtures. All right, but good question. And by the way, if you hit G on your keyboard, it will show you the lights. I hit G again, they disappear. So that's quite good because it's easier to select here. Can I go there and select this or select this? Hopefully, there you go. No, deselect. Ah, oh, yeah, pretty close together, but sometimes. If you don't have them turned on, you're not sure where they are, you could click in the C now, it doesn't really select. So hit G, select, and then you can work around with the intensity. Okay, so yeah, that is quite nice. So if you work with this, the, the more artificial light you put in, the better you see it will look, but you have to make sure it looks realistic, okay? So don't overdo it. The best thing is, like Steve just said, he's on the unknown, but it's Steve from Colorado. Make sure you add first an area light in front of the window, any window you have. Second, I would add um, a light to any light fixtures you have. And just like I said, copy them if it's the same as in this hallway, as example, make an instant. That's quite nice. There's another little thing I like to show you let me render this up. Okay, look, I'm, this is this is nowhere near close of being finished, obviously. I would have to work a lot more, but I can still show you another tidbit. So let me render this with Path Tracer. Okay, can you look at the left here of the furniture on the left? It is a bit dark here. If I turn off the Path Tracer, it stays sort of darkish. So another thing a lot of times people do is let me just add another light uh, over here. It's called a fill light. So let me go um, omnidirectional light. I put this right here. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay, so in that, that's, let's just say that's the image I want to render out. Maybe move it a little bit like this, uh, redraw. So I've got this omnidirectional light, I turn it off, and you can see this, there's just not enough light bouncing around there at the moment. So we call this fill light if we lighten this little bit up here. So I click this on, and all you have to do is now put out the intensity, start very low, start with a five or something. Let me have a look if I turn this off now. Oh, look, it's so much better already. Let me go to number two. I turn on and off. See, this is almost black instead of red. If I turn that on, it just brightens it up a little bit. You gotta be very careful. Don't go too high. They are usually very low light, those fill lights. Because I show you, obviously, if it's on 10, it's sort of, oh, this looks actually not too bad, but it doesn't look realistic. 
unless there's a light fixture at the back but we can't see this and uh, yeah but so keep this in mind fill lights like this they're great in the scene very very useful but keep them low let me put this on one uh, probably two I, I like two two is good it gives me a bit of definition because that's the other bit if I turn this off okay look this is again it's a bad example with the sofa it's a very simple sofa it's the quality is not good but I just thought I'd chuck them in for now it's very a flat surface right but if this would be a bit round and I turn this little light on it will give me much more definitions around the edges and corners it's already looking better with a flat surface but surface but that that's good so I, I really think that uh, another tip is important so you can see that the internal lights again like the external depending where your camera is you will have to adjust the lights a little bit or add some more lights or even turn some off it really depends as example let me go here maybe you want to have another few you in the dining room you know I, I just make this up now sitting on the table over here as example looking this way then you can see obviously now back right back here it's too dark so we need some light in there so I think it's a good idea maybe even in your card system you don't even need to be into emotion you can already in your card system de decide a little bit which perfect perspective view could be good um, you know what you want to show the client and choose a couple of the ones that are really good you really want to show them then you don't do do those ones first into emotion but obviously if the client comes back and wants to do something else and yeah depending where you go you have to unfortunately add some more light okay i think that's sort of what i've got for the internal like i said there's obviously more to do you probably notice also the difference uh, in quality if you render path tracer let me turn that on yeah look the, the floor here. you know what because i got a bit of time anyway it's on just nine let me go high up and render a higher image so this will now calculate a lot more it will take longer um, the path tracer but it, it will look better in quality so me personally for interior renders for stills i only use path tracer it's just a bit more uh, the, the quality is a little bit better definitely in compared to lumen but then if you do animation i recommend lumen it renders much faster and it still looks pretty good all right any questions while this is rendering here nobody excellent excellent that's good yes it is a bit slow because i have high quality settings for my high um you know when i render it out i work in in low and medium if i do my test renders but i did set the high quality on pretty high so i don't have to keep setting it for every image i do all right now all good thanks for all the tips and work around very helpful i'm glad i could help out you're most than welcome thanks for coming in and joining in that's good for me too all right it's still going that's okay you will see as example it will i can see already the it will give you nice shadows the shadows around you know the sofa it, it will be look it will look pretty good even so you know the quality of some of the textures i have worked on the sofa itself like i said is too simple you need better quality 3d furniture to make it look more realistic you know it's depending what you want sometimes you might quite happy just using the normal um, furniture libraries you have into motion but if you want a bit more quality uh, look in Sketchfa, Sketchfa app you might find some sofas there but otherwise you would have to go a little bit online and search for better quality furniture and um, import them this will be another webinar I'm doing um, with 3d models because again for better quality renders the models are quite important 
it's almost there. All right. Come on, you can do it. There you go. So the shadows are pretty good. Um, yeah, so that took a bit of a while, but it definitely looks much better and than just a quick render. And if I swap this now to, let me swap this to Lumen. Uh, real time, Lumen, there you go. It do, Lumen does render a bit better than it displays here, but you, I think you can see the difference already between Lumen and the Path Tracer. Okay, look, if that if you got no questions, that's all I've got for you today. Um, in two days time, I've got a Q&A session. Uh, like always, I prepared something, but look, I'm more than happy, write me an email um, and then we, it's in your emails I sent there's an email and just write me an email if you have questions and I'll talk about it in two days time if you got time to log in any problems you got maybe I should get that in here let me have a quick look I'll put that in here just in case we got two I should have done that before but that's okay you're still here so let me copy this and we go to my uh, there you go sorry membership support at asmtechbase.com there you go why are the lights on the floor shimmering that's because i've got it on lumen settings lumen is um trying to you know re recalculate all the time it's an inst it's all always doing this right um yeah i'll show you quick the real time here and um, we do have some settings scene detail viewing distance and lightning update speed so if i go on 10 oh no, i can knock out four and then move a bit around it tries to update the lighting i think a bit over here and you can see it sort of a bit looks funny and if i go lower it updates quicker so it almost gets rid of the flickering now so it keeps quicker updating updating but don't worry they will not render out so yeah the floor shimmering that shows up e even more but if let me go to update yeah especially up here look at this now it sort of flickers everywhere because it's um, a slow maybe slow update it's actually funny the lower the number the quicker it updates to the go down here 2.6 there you go good question absolutely absolutely and um, what else yeah that's good by the way if you ask how did it do the path tracer um hi you know if you look path tracer here i do have the high settings on yeah um, 1024 for the pixels and the bounces at 15. So if I go to medium, that's the default setting from trim motion or even low. They're all default settings. But this high, which is now a new default settings, I did set. I did this actually here. Preferences. And then you can go to path racer. And here you got the low medium and high presets and I just changed that all right great look that's that's good I'll um, sign off now and I hope to see you on Thursday otherwise next week if you can't make it that's all good um, next week what do I have next week I think I have the 3d models like I said today there, there's there's a lot to talk about the 3d modeling in your cat system different cat system and obviously different you know furniture or even cars and stuff trees uh, i think that's very important too great thanks again and i hope to see you next time
Bye for now.